Hey folks, Lake Speed Jr. I'm back again with my buddy David Chamberlain. Glad to be here. We're here at Driven Racing Oil. And you know, David, one of the things that we come across pretty regular at Total Seal, and I'm sure you guys here at Driven see the same thing too, that you know, viscosity and what people use for viscosity tends to be one of those big uh, misconceptions. Yeah, it's like a creature of habit. It's like, oh, well, well, I always use 2050, so that's what I will continue to use. Correct. Haven't had a problem. Right, haven't had a problem. Yeah, <laughs> we see that a lot. Um, but as opposed to using data in science to figure out viscosity, again, it's, it's a creature of habit, which again, I understand why that comes into play. If you haven't had a problem, you haven't had a failure, there's not a lot of motivation to make a big change right. and to feel that risk, yeah. if you will. But one of the things that you guys have here at Driven, which I love and refer to people quite regularly, is a chart that actually allows you to make a choice without risk. Correct. Because there's lots of science built into this. Because one of the things that people don't understand about viscosity is that it changes with temperature. Correct. So I'm going to tell a little story here. Uh, as part of the Engine Performance Expo, we were doing a dyno work, some dyno work out at Ben Strader's place at EFI University. And you know, normally when we out there, we're running endurance tests. You know, you know, more longer term, several hours worth of testing, so the engine has plenty of time to get up the temperature and then stabilize. So we're running all that test at high temperature, which mm. we got, we already know. Okay, bearing clearance, oil viscosity, oil temperature. We, we got it all mapped out. Mm. What's interesting is that same viscosity oil that you would run at that high temperature test, say 200 degrees water temperature test. Mm -hmm. But now you run it at 120 degrees water temperature. Now, I know I'm talking about water temperature, not oil temperature. But when you have a hotter engine, higher water temperature, the oil temperature is going to rise up to that point, it's And if you run it, up. it's going to pass it, right? Because the longer you run, the more yep. heat gets drawn into the oil. But at a short duration, low water temperature, or temperature is way down, right. well, viscosity is actually way up, right? So don't get confused with my, my hand signals there. I'm directly dyslexic anyway, just ask my <laughs> wife, she'll tell you. So yes, at low engine temperature, viscosity is much higher. higher. It's a whole and different oil at that time, whole different lubricant at that time. You know me for a long time. I would have never believed you could have seen a 25 horsepower difference I think I remember seeing changing that. Changing Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Right. I'm like, no, because I've never done low yeah. temperature oil testing. Everything's at high temperature because yeah. we're trying to stress the oil out to yeah. the max. And you either have a drag race application that's going to run at low temperature, or you have endurance racing, or you know, from the NASCAR days, it's going to be running. 280, 290 degrees or above. Right. And, and so we're so, always going lower in viscosity yeah. when we're doing like drag racing dyno work. Right. And you're making small changes because you don't want to go too thin. Yep. So we, in that, this case, we went higher in viscosity. The 40, the 40 centistoke number becomes much more important. Oh, the 100, 100 centistoke number yeah. doesn't even matter. At that point. Right. So we're talking about 40, 100. We're talking about Celsius, by the way. So that's yep. 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 212 yep. degrees uh, Fahrenheit is a, those different numbers. But the key thing was we went higher in viscosity because we were going to put boost to it later. So we were trying to get ready for boost just to make sure everything was good. And oh my, it was mind blowing to see the oil, you know, pressure went up a little bit, mm -hmm. but we lost so much power because we missed on viscosity. And I kicked myself later because I'm like, dummy, there was a chart right here that could have told you that. <laughs> but you because made it. <laughs> literally, well, I did. Uh, but literally, this chart spells out what the it's well, a guy. It's a guideline, right? It's not the ideal, yeah. But it's a good, safe start place. Yes, based on your bearing clearance, based on your oil temperature, so that you're not 25 horsepower off. Yep. So again, you can do it to yourself even when you know better. Yep. Which we did, but it's a good lesson. I thought that 
you know, viscosity is something people need to think a little bit more about. Because and think about it as something that's dynamic. Because yes. again, back to, uh, you, you know, you've done some earlier teaching on uh, viscosity is relative to temperature. Right. And all oils thin out in relation to temperature. That's a great and point. So, so in this case, you know, I was talking about the, the, the 40 degrees Celsius mm-hmm. cinestoke number. Mm-hmm. In, in that case, that was the important number. Right. Where sometimes, as oil guys, we're looking sometimes at the 100, the 100 yep. Celsius Cinestoke number. Yep. And, and and we'll look at the 40, but we're not too concerned because we're like, well, we're going to move past that because it's going to be running. Yeah, you're going to run know, and you're going to get Up to here. 220, 240 degrees. You know, so we're not we're not worried about that, but in this case, you really needed to be. Well, because that back to that dynamic statement, which is the right right word for that. It's constant. Viscosity about. increases as temperature decreases. Yep. Viscosity decreases as temperature increases. Yep. So it goes both ways. So just because we always know we're running a higher temperature, we need a little bit more viscosity to compensate for that. The flip side of that is true as well. And how that relates to piston rings is oil ring tension. Mm -hmm. Because the higher that viscosity is, the more oil ring tension you have to have to scrape it off the wall. To seal. So it seals. Because you don't want oil in the combustion chamber. Right. You want to keep the oil in the crankcase, not on top of the piston. It is never a good day if you've got oily exhaust ports. So... um, and you get all the fuel in your oil, too. <laughs> yeah, it's not a, never a good thing. We want it to seal up, right? And me, being sealed means oil's in the bottom, not in the top. Uh, or if it's a Porsche, a flat engine, you know, oil's not out there. You want oil in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Depending upon what orientation your engine is. So the, the point being is that that oil ring tension also plays into this. That if I'm going to run an engine at a low operating temperature and I'm running boost where I need a higher viscosity oil, you're probably going to need more oil ring tension to properly control the oil. Mm-hmm. But if I'm running a high temperature engine, my oil is going to be thinner. Mm-hmm. Then you I don't get away need, with less I can get tension. With, exactly. Yep. Which is free horsepower, by yep. the way. So these are all these things to consider. You know, it's but you were really robbing yourself if you could run, you know, you're running a higher temp, uh, tension ring mm-hmm. at, at the low temperature stuff. And where you could pick up power is by running a thinner oil. Right. We could have run If we could have run a thinner oil, you then we could got get that away. 25 horsepower back. Right. Well, in this case, we happen to know we ended up making 1300 horsepower on the engine. And we looked at the bearings and we made the right choice in viscosity. We had the proper viscosity yep. for the bearings. There were no witness marks of anything being out of line. So That's the balance there. That's right. the that's the Strybeck curve. So don't forget. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't so, forget about the hydrodynamic lubrication. Right. Because we put that oil in there for boost. Yep. Wrong oil for naturally aspirated. Right oil for boost. Which is hey, that's part of what this chart talks about. Yep. Is there there? It's not just bearing clearance and oil temperature. There's also factors here. If you're running E85 or you're running boost, how to adjust for that? A bit. Because those are variables you have to compensate. You know, calculate into your decision so that you can make an educated choice in viscosity as opposed to just relying on hearsay or habit. Right, because why are you going up in viscosity with something like E85 or methanol? Higher wash. Yep, more fuel dilution. Yep, it's going to thin the oil out. Yep. So And wash off the cylinder walls, but your piston rings hate that, by the right, way. Right, They like to be lubricated. Snowballs. <laughs> it's a bad thing. You, yeah. want, you want to avoid that. So again, use this chart from the guys at Driven to make your choice. Uh, this is on the PDF catalog on our website if you want to check it out. That's right. You can go to DrivenRacingOil.com, yeah. and it's, there's a catalog page, link somewhere. Catalog link uh, somewhere there on the homepage, page, page 36. 36. Yeah, page 36. Yeah. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.